Hi everybody, welcome to Happy Landscapes with me, Chris. Uh, today we're going to paint a happy little landscape right back here, but the focus of today is I really wanted to talk about um, everything that you need to get started painting on your own. Right? If you're like me, you've probably spent years watching the master Bob Ross uh, paint on, you know, on his show. Um, and you've probably always wondered, can I do that? And I'm here to tell you that yes, in fact, you can, and it's a whole lot easier than you might think it is to get started. So what I'm going to do today is talk about everything that you need uh, to buy and to have on hand in order to, to start your first landscape payment. Uh, so the first thing you're going to need is a space. Now I'm in my basement. Uh, I have a black curtain hanging back here just to make it a little bit nicer for video purposes. Uh, but you're going to need a space where things can get a little bit messy because when you're dealing with oil paints, uh, they spatter and splatter and you don't want those getting on your carpet or on your drapes or on your walls or anything like that because it doesn't come off very easy. So if you have a spare room, you might want to put down some, some sheets or something like that or uh, something just to, just to keep the paint off the floor or maybe you have a dedicated uh, space like like I do my basement where I can do this and get things dirty and it doesn't matter That's the first thing you need. The second thing you need is an easel. I have <clears throat> An easel right here that I picked up. I don't know. I think it was about 40 bucks or something like that It's a freestanding easel as you can see it holds the the canvas nice and high so that I can actually reach up to paint on it So it's a floor easel, but I didn't start out with a floor easel. I started out with a tabletop easel like this uh, it's pretty simple. It just kind of folds, it folds flat for storage, and then you can put it, set it on the tabletop somewhere if you've got a table. And see if I can get it close enough where you can see, or far enough away. And it's it's fully adjustable. It's got uh, wing nuts on the back here that you can tighten, and this moves up and down. And I actually did a little bit of modification on this. I made this movable as well, so that it could fit any size canvas that I was working with. This, I think I got on sale for like 20 bucks. Um, so an easel is probably going to be your uh, biggest expense right off the bat. You do need one that will hold your canvas nice and tight. You don't want to try and use one of the flimsy little um, easels that you get at the dollar store because they're not going to hold your painting and you're going to get frustrated and, and it's not going to work. And I do prefer having an easel to hold my canvas upright as opposed to laying it flat on the table. I suppose you could do it flat on a table um, if you don't have an easel. Um, I've not tried that because I prefer to have mine standing straight up and down. It just it works easier that way. <clears throat> the other thing that you're going to need, and this doesn't get talked about a lot, is a paint thinner. You're going to want to get some odorless paint thinner. This is a Mona Lisa brand. There's several other brands out there. Make sure it's odorless. Even though it says it's odorless, it's not completely odorless. And there are fumes. So wherever space you're working in, you want to make sure that it's well ventilated because you don't want to be breathing in these fumes because you will use this. Now, this is just a, well, this is a pretty decent sized jar, but this will last you for quite a while. Um, in fact, you're going to reuse your paint thinner over and over. So to do that, I also picked up this brush cleaning jar. I don't even think you can see the front of it. Uh, it's just a jar. If you've got your own jar, you can use your own jar. I also have used a uh, coffee tin. Uh, but the reason I like this jar is inside there's a little screen, a little concave or convex screen that you can scrub your brushes against in the, uh, in the paint thinner. I'm not going to hold this up because it will spill everywhere. But that screen is really helpful at cleaning off the brushes. Although you can do it without. You, you just got a coffee can, get your paint thinner. But this is really helpful. Speaking of paint thinner, you're also going to want something to catch your loose thinner once you're, once you're done when you clean your brushes off. I got a little trash can from the dollar store. This works great for beating your brushes into. Um, because you will have a lot of extra paint thinner on your your bigger brushes and you can 
just beat it down in this trash can like this and it'll catch all that excess thinner and then you can reuse it and that's important because paint thinner is kind of expensive uh, I you know one one jug of it this jug will last you know a year maybe six months to a year um, unless you waste it so don't waste it let's talk about brushes you can get started with I think four brushes four tools this right here is a two inch chip brush that I picked up at the hardware store for a dollar and a half, two dollars, something like that. Not the greatest brush, but it will work. It will work for, and the alternative is the Bob Ross two inch brush, which, where's that? Oh. I've done something great. This is the Bob Ross brand two inch brush. This is the two inch chip brush. Um, this one's okay. This, I mean, this one's what he used. I also picked up one of these. It's an uh, angle sash brush, two inch angle sash brush. It's a different brand. I like this one. I like these a lot. Uh, talk more about these later. But we're talking about how you can do it cheap, starting your investment as cheaply as possible. Chip brush right here. Okay. Next, you're going to want a one inch brush. I like the one inch brush. Uh, this is a Yachtsman one inch brush. You can buy these on Amazon for like three bucks, two, three bucks, something like that. They are great. They are wonderful. I love this brush. I will use this as my one inch brush from now on. I will never buy the Bob Ross brand one inch brush again because it's great. Fan brush. You're going to need a fan brush. This is the Hobby Lobby brand Master Touch fan brush, and it's not great. Um, I have several other fan brushes that I use, but since we're going to paint a painting with the cheap materials, with the cheap tools, uh, this is a fan brush. It's a number, number, I don't know, six, something like that. It's a pretty decent sized one. Um, I don't like this. It's it's too even though it is natural bristles, it's not really full and it's not very stiff. It's pretty soft. Um, I found that making trees with it was a little difficult. However, the other thing I discovered is that after you use it a couple of times, maybe run it through some paint, clean it off, let it dry, it gets a little stiffer. Uh, if you don't mind using Amazon, um, there are some, uh, some fan brushes on Amazon that are really good, come highly recommended. I haven't gotten any of those yet, but I probably will, uh, and they're super cheap. Um, but this was like, I don't know, three dollars at uh, the Hobby Lobby. I get a lot of my supplies from the Hobby Lobby because they're cheap and they're decent, except for these brushes. They're not; these brushes aren't good. They also Hobby Lobby also does a lot of half-off sales. In fact, yesterday or Friday, I went. They had they're having a fifty percent off all of their Master's Touch art supplies, and that brings me to paint. I do use the Master's Touch oil paints from Hobby Lobby. This is my Thalo Blue, a Lizard and Crimson. These are $5.99 regularly, and these tubes will last you quite a bit. Uh, but if you get them with the 50% off sale, three bucks for a tube of paint. That means it's as cheap, if not cheaper, than painting with acrylics. So don't think that using oils is, you know, out of your realm of possibilities because of expense. It's not any more expensive than using acrylics. Um, so, paints. You will need the following colors. You will need Thalo Blue, Alizarin Crimson, Titanium White, um, Black, like an Ivory Black or Midnight Black, and what else? Um, a plant green or a sap green, and yellow medium. Those are the colors that you have to have to get started, or that I think you have to have to get started, and that's what we're going to use today. The other thing that you need as far as paint goes is a liquid first coat. 
This is from Hobby Lobby. Uh, this is probably your second most, second biggest expense after the paint thinner. This and the paint thinner probably cost about the same. This can right here, but this can will last me forever. I haven't used all of it. I started with this can when I first started uh, painting, and that was like three years ago. So one can will last you quite a while. Um, so you can you can get this at Hobby Lobby. I don't think Michaels carries it. I haven't seen it at Michaels, uh, but most of your art supply stores should carry this. If not, you can order it online. Twelve bucks for a can of this. Twelve bucks for that. Twelve bucks for a decent size can of paint thinner. And that's what you need in order to get started. Oh, one other tool that I forgot to mention. Palette knife. This is a small palette knife. I picked this up a long time ago. I don't even remember where. Maybe Michael's. Something like that. This is my favorite palette knife. I like this one better than my big old Bob Ross palette knife. Um, I think the small size is actually, it works better. You can do more with it, but that's up to you. Um, I did, I was able to buy... <clears throat> So this is a, a bigger, I have a feeling these are the same brand. Um, these were the only ones that they had the last time I went to buy palette knives. It's pretty big, it's pretty chunky, uh, but they work, but it works. Um, so this is like two bucks at Hobby Lobby. So you have to have a palette knife and those three brushes that I talked about. And you're ready to get started. If anybody has any questions about starting materials, Feel free to send me a message. I'd love to hear from you. I'll be happy to answer any questions that you might have. Okay. So let's get started. Why oil paints? Why choose to work with oils instead of acrylics? Acrylics are uh, extremely popular. A lot of people use acrylics and they paint beautiful pictures with acrylics. So why, why paint with oils? Oils are a little bit more hazardous, you know, they've got more chemicals in them. Um, the jury's still kind of out as to whether or not they're healthy to use, I don't know. Um, acrylics are just safer, so why use oils? I think the effects that you can get using oils uh, just beat out anything you can do with acrylics. The blending uh, that we do with the skies and the water being able to move the paint while it's wet on the canvas, you cannot do that with acrylics. You can't, because they dry too fast. Even if you water them down, they still dry way, way too fast to be able to do what you can do with oils. <clears throat> so let me get my liquid first coat. And I'm going to use all of these cheaper tools and materials to show you that you can paint on a budget. One thing I did forget that I like to use, this is optional, um, I have these vinyl gloves that I wear to keep from getting too messy, um, just to keep my fingers from getting too messy, and they are disposable if you are, if you don't like disposing of things. And by all means, don't wear them. You can <clears throat> do this without gloves. Just wash your hands real good afterwards. Most of the newer oil paints, they don't have the, uh, the toxic chemicals in them that the older ones were known for. So, I'm put my final gloves on. Get my, my two inch chip brush put on my base coat of liquid white. Now this is the step that a lot of beginners struggle with. Knowing if and when they've got enough liquid white on their canvas. One trick that you can do is you can prime your canvas beforehand with like a hint of gray and then you'll easily be able to see where you've gone over it with the liquid white. Because putting white on a white canvas, it's very difficult to see. Or you can kind of move your head around and see where it's glossy on the canvas and 
where it's not, and you do, you want to scrub it in just as good as you can. Get a good coat on. But on the flip side, you don't want it too much on the canvas. And you want just enough so that the other paint that you put on will slide around real easy and blend real easy, but you don't want so much that it just makes your whole canvas all soggy. I have a feeling I'm putting more on here than I normally would, but it's okay. Getting pretty good coverage. Might have a little too much on there. Normally I say you want to err on the side of too little. Too little paint, because you can always add more paint, but once it's on there, it's hard to take it off. You can, but usually you have to start your whole painting up. So, you're just really going to brush this in real good. Got it all heavy up here in this corner. And the other thing is you can treat these chip brushes however you want because they won't last long. This is the second time I've used this one. I don't know how long I will actually get to use this one. Well, I might ruin it this time or next time or find out that it's just not. I do have a few dry spots around there. And I want to make sure that I get all of this covered. Because it is frustrating if you have a dry spot. Because then when you go to put your water in or something, try to blend it, make it with water, it looks wrong. You can work it out, but it's just so much easier if you got it covered correctly with your liquid white first for you. Okay. This is the part that you never saw on Bob Ross. He never showed you all the prep stuff. And I think it's very important that for a beginner, if you've never done this before, you know how to do this. You see it done. Have it explained. So you don't have to try and figure it out for yourself. Okay, that's good, that's good, that's covered. Nice and covered, all right. Now I'm gonna clean my brush. So I'm gonna dip it into my, into my jar here, clean that brush off real good, and then I'll beat it into my little waste basket. A little Dollar Tree purchase. Now, I have another trash can over here. Uh, over on, on this side of me that I, I usually use. Um, it's got a, I, I screwed a wooden rod across it so that I could actually beat my brush against that rod to get it nice and clean and dry. But I have found since I bought this uh, Dollar Tree trash can that it actually works just as well and I actually can save more of my paint thinner. So, I'll probably just keep using it. Oh, I forgot to talk about one thing that you're going to need. You're going to need something to mix your paint on. Now, I went and bought a palette because I like the, uh, the convenience of the palette and being able to hold it. and It's big and you can mix all the paints you want on it. But you don't have to have a palette. You can use paper plates. Uh, I used paper plates the last several times I was uh, at a gallery and I decided to to paint one while I was at the gallery showing to occupy my time. I forgot my palette, so I just used a, a plastic plate. You can use plastic plates, you can use a paper plate, um, one that's got a wax coating on it. You don't want to use a styrofoam plate though. That wouldn't work. So, you need something to mix your paints on. Go 
ahead and beat out my brush here. I'm just beating it right here in this trash can. And when you clean your brush off like this, it's good to have it contained so you don't splatter paint thinner all over everything. Because if you splatter paint thinner on your on your painting, it's gonna it's gonna be a headache. Enough. I don't have a palette. I need a palette. So if you try this and you decide that you do enjoy doing this, you can go and you can buy a palette. This is mine. It's nice and grungy. I've used it forever. Uh, and now you're going to get your paints out. And like I said, I'm going to use Phthalo Blue, Blizzard Crimson, Titanium White, Black, I have Ivory Black, I don't think it's the best black, next time I get black I'll probably get a different black, some Plant Green, and Yellow Medium. I think the last time I got paint, I went to Michael's, and I got this uh, Windsor and Newton. Um, it's okay. Uh, it's not my favorite. It doesn't... Uh, the Thalo Blue is fine. The thing about these the oil paints is you want the right consistency of paint. Uh, the ones at Michael's, I think it's these, these Windsor and Newtons, I think that's where I got it. They're... They're too thin and creamy, and for most of your paints, you want a nice, thick, stiff paint. And uh, the Master's Touch are like that. So I've put just a little bit of blue on my palette to start off my sky. And I always... Less is more when it comes to oil paints. Less is more. So I'm going to take my 2-inch chip brush... And just get a little bit of paint on there. Like I said, you can always add more, but you can't take it away once you've got it on there. So I'm going to go up here to the top of my painting, and I'm going to make a little extra big, well, these are big exaggerated X strokes, but that's what you're going to do. You're going to do X's like this, all across for your sky, like so. It's really dark, as you can see. But, if you start at the top, nice and dark, once you blend, as you blend down, it will get lighter and lighter and lighter. Now, as you can see up here, I didn't get enough liquid white. It's not blending quite as well as I would like. for me and I got some glare on it so I'm trying to get a good look that's not blended very well um, I don't know well you guys can see that but it doesn't look blended to me so I'm just going to go back up here and I think that's the one drawback 
are the main drawback to this chip brush is that the bristles aren't packed tight enough and so in order to blend things really well you do have to use quite a bit more force than I would use with my other brushes. To blend all that out. That doesn't look too bad. That doesn't look too bad. Now I'm also going to have a lake here. But <clears throat> I'm going to add I'm going to add just the teeniest, teeniest, tiniest bit of green to my phthalo blue into my water because this is going to be a lake like you see around here and most of the water in the lakes around here, they are quite filled with algae. So I'm just going to add a hint of green into my phthalo blue. If you're on my palette, so I've got my plant green, phthalo blue. Just grab it there. See what this looks like on the canvas. And we're going to go down here to the bottom and we're going to pull straight across the bottom like so. Make it look like water. Not enough green. Not enough green. Let's get some more green. The straighter you make those strokes, the better, the more it looks like water. that white bit right there in the middle. Make that nice sparkly white. Good. Okay, not too shabby. Now, we're going to get to the fun part. Actually, I'm going to wash that brush off. Because I want to use it blend things. Actually, no, probably not. I'll probably use my one-inch brush to blend out my clouds, because that's the next step. After you've got your, your sky and your water, then we're going to do some clouds. Some happy little clouds. But, let me go ahead and get my get that chip brush rinsed off. Now I'm going to get my fan brush. Get this chintzy old fan brush. Cheap one.
And then I'm going to get some titanium white. Here's my titanium white. And I'm going to get my brush and I'm actually I'm, I'm going to load this brush up real good. This is the time when you're making clouds, uh, you definitely want more paint on your brush than um, when you were doing the sky and stuff. So you load it up real good and really focus on the corners of the brush, okay? You want more paint on the corners of the brush because what you're going to do is you're going to scrub this paint in. You're really going to scrub it in. So then you go up here and you find out, you decide where you want to, where you want to put a cloud. Let's have a happy, happy puffy cloud right here. Right here. And then you just use the very corner of the brush and you make little tiny circles. And just kind of scrub the paint in. Flip it over. Scrub it in. Go back. Get some more paint. Yeah, it's going to pick up some of that blue from the sky. That's okay. And then you just kind of look and see where's your cloud going to live? How many clouds are you going to have? And the reason you push up is because when you push up you get a nice crisp uh, white edge. And then the bottom of your cloud actually blends out a little bit. You can do layers. Let's make sure we've got some nice bright white there. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to blend. So I'm going to take that one inch brush this Yachtsman one inch brush and on the bottom edge of the cloud just take the corner and you're just going to kind of blend it it's very very lightly stay away from that top edge where you just blend and you make the bottoms sort of fade out because what that does then is it allows you to do layers of clouds so I'm going to go back in, a lot more white on my brush. Again, the more white you get, do here, the better. I'm going to go back in, and if I just go in right on top of that, because I've now got a cleaner, brighter white edge there, it's going to make it look like another layer of cloud. Layers are the name of the game here. And I don't even know where I'm putting these clouds, I'm just putting them somewhere. Put them, put them on here. You just use the corner and just do little circles. And this is just very basic. I haven't mixed in any other colors. Sometimes, depending on what you're painting, you might want to add in some other colors to your clouds. Sometimes a little yellow. I did one the other day where I put in some yellow, make it a little brighter in one spot, because I'd seen a cloud right after a storm and part of it was just this brilliant yellow where the sun was shining through. And I thought, that is gorgeous. I want to paint that. So I did. So maybe you can mix in a little pink. See if it's going to be, you know, like a summertime sunset, something like that. These are just going to be like light, fluffy, floaty clouds here. Nothing too crazy. Just going to be a nice sort of summertime. scene on the lake. Okay. Get my 
one inch brush, and I, I really like my one inch brush. I'm going to go back up here, where the ones that I added, just blend out the bottoms of those, like so, to make them look a little bit fuzzy at the bottom. Just clouds are always sort of fuzzy and flat on the bottom. Alright, my head's in the way, I can't see. It's cloud over here, so. <clears throat> yeah, I like those clouds. Nice little fluffy clouds. Nice little fluffy clouds. Okay, I think that's it for my clouds. I'm gonna wash off my fan brush. And this is the advantage too, if you do this a lot, and you have a lot of brushes, you don't have to clean them off quite as often. But if you've only got one of each kind, uh, like I've got then, you clean more. And it's okay. It just takes a little bit longer when you have to clean more often. You can beat this one off in your, in your little trash can. Because that's satisfying. That's fun. That's satisfying. And seeing all that thinner collecting the bottom of your trash can, that's kind of satisfying too. Um, all right. Now I know I said uh, that palette knife is one of those basic tools that you need, uh, but I'm not going to use that for this painting. I'm going to do some mountains, but I'm going to do some mountains around here, some of those uh, rolling hills. Um, so I'm not going to use the palette knife to paint with. What I am going to use it for is to mix the paint, and that is an important part of all of this. So I'm going to get some of those crimson on my palette and some ivory black. I'm going to show you my ivory black tube. I tend to use a lot more white and black than I do other colors. So this is a big tube. Compare this to my Thalo blue tube. <laughs> That's a lot bigger. Especially the white. I go through a lot of white uh, just because you do. Something you do. Go through a lot of white when you're painting. So I try and buy those in bulk when there's a sale because a big tube like this is regularly $14.99. But if you get it for 50% off, $7.99, $7.50, whatever. All right, so I'm going to take my palette knife, and I've got some blue, some crimson, and some black. And I'm going to mix up a nice dark lavender color. And there is a ratio to this. You want about twice as much crimson to blue because the blue is really, really strong. That thalo blue is super duper strong. Um, so I'm just going to take that, take about half of that blue there, mix it in with my crimson, and it'll make a gorgeous lavender color. Just a hint to the red side, which is what I prefer. it up real good. And then I'm going to take some black and mix that in and darken it up real nice and dark. Okay. And then once you start painting, you want your darks. You always do your darks first. You know, a nice dark background. Then you can put your highlights on. So I've got some nice dark lavender mixed up there. And I'm going to go back to my fan brush. I'm going to load it up. Lots and lots of paint. On the fan brush there. And then I'm going to put in some mountains. Okay, and these are 
rolling hills. So, actually, I'll tell you what. I'm going to do a couple layers. And when you're doing layers, you want to do lighter, farther away, and then brighter, closer you get. So I'm going to actually get, get some of that white mix in with my lavender color. I'm just doing this with the fan brush itself. Make that value. see the difference between this. Yeah, you can see that. This is lighter, a lot lighter than this. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to go up here, I'm going to just sort of draw a little ridge mountain back here. Use your brush to uh, draw the top outline of whatever you want. And kind of come through. take my, my two inch chip brush and what you're going to do is you're just going to grab it, grab that paint, pull it, grab it from the top, pull it down, and blend it. Whichever direction your hills are running. This is a great opportunity if you live somewhere where there are mountains and you want to paint a specific mountain, go for it. back into that dark lavender color. I think I might have three little hills. And darken it up just a little bit. It's going to be darker than what I just put on there, but lighter than that final color up there. overlap that's fine you can overlap your your mountains it's okay I'm just using the fan brush to blend this out instead of that two inch brush I don't know why Really think about the lay of those hills, what direction they're running. And I think that's going to be my closest one here. It's going to be my closest one, so I'm going to go back and darken that up now that I'm in here. Looking at this. <coughs> I'm going to Blend this 
out. Down here at the bottom, like so. And then I'm going to go back up here and just in that dark color, come back up here. I'm going to make this my, my closest ridge right here. Like so. Okay, see how much darker that is than anything else back there? and smooth. Smooth as you want it. Keep that nice hard edge up there at the top. We blend all the way down. Make it blend down here. Then we're going to tap. We're going to tap, tap, tap. Down here at the bottom. Tap, 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 tap. Tapping does is it gives us a nice little misty area. And pull up gently, pull up. Like so. <clears throat> okay, we got some nice Blue Ridge Mountains there. But if this is going to be summer, we can't just have Blue Mountains. We need to have some highlights. So, I clean my fan brush off again. I really, really like using my fan brush. In fact, I'll probably use the fan brush for most of the rest of this. You're probably wondering, oh, I wonder if he's got a picture or if he's got something in his head uh, that he's painting off of. And the answer is no, I don't. I have nothing already up in my head, except that I knew I wanted to do some rolling hills with a lake, that sort of thing. So, <clears throat> yeah, here's your answer for that. Uh, now I'm going to go back up and I'm going to get my fan brush and I'm going to go back up into my green and see what this looks like. Just straight up green. Tap, tap, tap. On the end of the fan brush. I'm going to look up in here, and I'm, I'm going to leave that back one alone. But on the second one, I'm just going to tap, tap, tap some green in here. Just gently tapping. with the corner of the brush. Sort of following the contours. Of that ridge. back in there. Some tree tops.
tap, tap, it's very hard to contest here. Put in some texture. Yeah, I like that. That's nice. Okay, I think now I'm going to get a little yellow to mix in with the green. Make it a little bit brighter, because as I come forward, I want those colors to pop a little bit more. So I'm actually adding some more green to my palette. And I do this quite frequently, because... Like I said, you can always add more color, but you can't take it away. And once it's out of the, once the paint is out of the tube, there's no getting it back in. So, I try not to squeeze too much out at a time, so that I can save it for later. Okay. I'm going to go back to my green here, and then get a little touch of that yellow. Actually, going to need a lot of that yellow, because that green is super dark. Let's make some nice green for this hill right here. Now you could probably use the 2 inch brush for this, but I like the control fan brush gives me. mix it up I'm gonna do some of that darker straight up sap green. And then some of that lighter green. We've got some more contrasts there. Those if you've ever looked at a mountain before, you know that they aren't all just the same color green on those hills. It's a lot of different variations.
I could do this all day. <clears throat> I could like sit here and use greens and stuff all day long. But I'm not going to. No, we're going to move on. Okay. We've got bigger fish to fry. Let's see. My lake is going to be here. I need a little bit more land here. I think, I think, I think. Yeah. Okay. You can go back to that dark lavender color. Same, same brush, just using a dirty brush for this. And we're going to use this a little different technique. Okay. I'm going to, I got my foggy area here, my misty area. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm just going to push up with that fan brush. Like this. Look at that. Now we've got a lot closer foliage where we can actually make out. individual trees and that's sort of going to the side there but if you do it like this go up and down like this it doesn't look quite so much like pine trees it looks more like you know some deciduous trees some pine trees mixed in. So we're going to put this in all the way across here. Maybe it goes way up over here, maybe this hill. Maybe there's a hill that comes, comes in over here. brush in there. Okay. Now I'm going to take my two inch chip brush. I'm going to go through here and I'm going to make this little lake touch and pull down. And that's your lake shore. Then you go across. Make it a reflection. That. Do that kind of all the way across. And there's my lake shore over there. Okay. Now, just for ease of this, I'm going to put that brush aside. I actually do have another one here that I haven't used and I'm going to do some highlights. Go back into that yellow, green. I'm going to come back in here and I want to highlight some of these things. fan brush. We 
push it up. Get some of that green in there. So sorry, I'm not really doing much talking here, but put a lot of color in there, touch it up with some green. Now there are plenty of other yellows that you can use. Indian yellow, and those are really pretty. Mix those up as well and with this, these yellows and stuff. There we go. Just want to get some highlights on that white short before. Getting a lie when I said we weren't going to use the uh, palette knife because we are in fact going to use the palette knife. We take the palette knife and we take a little bit of a liquid white and we're going to cut in a shoreline over there. So you just get a very little bit of the knife and then you come over here. straight lines across. Oh, I need to get finger cream. Again, let me get a little bit closer. Because, 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 because. Oh dear, just made a big mess. Just made a big mess. Right there. I'm going to go back to my fan brush now. back to my dark color and we're going to put in a foreground here okay so we've got my lake here then we're going to have land here You can do this with a fan brush, you can do this with eh, whatever you want. Let me go get my little two inch brush, see if I can get, get some more paint on there faster. And you can just kind of tap the paint in. Get a nice and dark area. Let 
mean, honestly, he was coming here and painted him like that. But I feel like this you get a little bit, a little bit more texture. Right now we're just putting in dark. Cover as much of this area as I can. I want to get all that light blue covered it. Why you say? Why did you put all that water down there and just cover it up? Because I didn't know what I was going to do. Okay. I just saw something else. I want. There's going to be some land here. There's gonna be a little dock. It's gonna be a little dock off the end there. Okay, so I'm gonna grab this. Pull it down. Go across. Oof. Should have done that with a clean brush. Should have done that with a clean brush. Clean off a brush. I clean off my one inch brush to do that. And all this stuff that I'm doing with a two inch brush, you can do with the one inch brush. Just depends on which you prefer. In there. Okay, let's do my dock. Let's do the dock. Okay. Since I'm seeing this now, and I hadn't seen it before, it's the way it goes sometimes. You don't always know what you're going to paint until you're painting it. You get some Raw umber, which is a nice little brown. <clears throat> I'm gonna get my palette knife. Pull that out nice and smooth. Cut across it, get a little roll of paint. And then we're gonna put a dock. Hmm, where's the dock going to be? The dock comes out here. Put my shape cut in here. Oh, 
I know I've never, never painted a dock before, but. I feel like there's a dock on this fishing lake. Yep. 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 Oh. 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 Here, I don't know what this is. They're a little jetty of land there. Whatever, whatever it happens to be. Don't ask me what these things are, because I don't know. Something sticking up. The dock there. Reflection of our dock. Little highlight here.
Got a little water line there. Okay, sorry. I'm uh, getting carried away with that. I'm not talking about talking about what I'm doing. Putting that dock in. Okay. Now we need a we need a big tree. All right, we're gonna do a big pine tree, and we can do it. We can do one with this. Maybe there's a tree right here. Maybe there's a big old tree. Right here. It comes way up here. Hey, the big old pine tree there. Maybe he's not the biggest pine tree we have. He's got to have a friend. And he's got an even bigger friend right there. See, you can do. Trees with these brushes. You just have to have the right touch. I like that. Maybe there's some bushes here. There's a I don't know. Some, some of these bushes here, I like the way this hand brush does that there. Okay, so we got our darks in. Now we got to do our lights, our highlights. Now we gotta put in some trunks. Go back and get some of that brown and white. Put in a trunk on this tree here. Put in a trunk on this tree here. Just kind of touch, touch, and touch. here with our greens and our yellows. Put in a 
bunch of bushes. And we're going to take our tile knife again, and we're going to scratch in some sticks and twigs here. like so. Then we're going to go back to our brown and we're going to put in a path. And our path is going to, uh, so it's our path is over here. Yeah. Yeah, we'll put some bushes in front. Pull it back into the And sure, there we go. And we're going to call that done. Because I'm tired of painting. And here we have some <clears throat> mounds in the back. Lake, dock, path. There you go. Hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out.